Welcome to Live in the Messiah's Love. I'm your host, Kimisha Lucier, and I'm always glad to have you here with me um, as we study the word. And if you're new here, this is your first time. I just wanted to say welcome. Um, glad you're here as well, and I hope you are blessed by the word of God. My resident guest <laughs> is here. <laughs> So I'm thankful to have you, darling, and I'm thankful for the time that you spend with me and the listeners going through the Word of God. Well, that's that's what the Lord did, put us together as helpmates to accomplish His purpose. So it's a pleasure, it's a blessing, and I am thankful to the Lord to be used. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I just want to pray for the, the listeners really quickly. And our time together, Father, we just thank you in the almighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we lift you up. We exalt the name of Jesus Christ, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess above the earth, in the earth and beneath the earth that Jesus is Lord. And we say that you are Lord Jesus. You are Lord of our lives. You are Lord of everything and you are lord of all things concerning us and we just submit ourselves to you right now lord and i just thank you for supernatural healing to go through the hearts and the minds and the bodies of the listeners lord god whatever is going on in their lives that you make it right i bind the hand of the adversary who is trying to attack them and to steal kill and destroy all that you're doing for them lord even from the a the smallest thing to the greatest. I rebuke the adversary right now in the almighty name of Jesus. Take your hands off their stuff. Take your hands off their mind. Mm, take your hands off their families. Take your hands off their finances. And you will not hinder or interfere with the plan of God going forth concerning their lives. So Holy Spirit, I just release you to come into this time. And I release you into those households, Lord God, into their families to minister according to your purpose, your goodwill and your pleasure concerning them. And I know that you are faithful. You do all things well and nothing is too hard for you, Jesus. So we thank you for that. We receive it and we bless your name, Lord. In Jesus' almighty name, we pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. So today's episode is called The Prophetic Declarations of Jesus's Mission. And in this section, we're going to be covering the area of the map that is labeled Prophetic Declaration of Jesus' Mission. Mm -hmm. um, so you can look there um, to kind of visualize where this happened in the, the span of eternity and time being set aside to deal with sin and the purification of the heavenly community before we get back to eternity again. So... I just want to encourage you to study, study the word of God and take the time to hear from the Holy Spirit. Approach this like you're going to school. Take notes, use tools like a dictionary to help you if you aren't familiar with certain words. Um, we do our best to, if there's a key term, provide that and give the clear definition for it. Um, so go ahead and write those down when we do um, go over those key terms and and study, meditate on it and let the Lord make the word alive to you. People from different places will use different words to describe things. Um, for example, my beloved, he's from the Northeast. <laughs> and I'm from Originally, the... <laughs> and now I'm just a sojourner. Exactly. But where we came up in the, the, the natural sense, I'm right. from the Southwest. I came up in the Southwest. So we have different, what would be called vernaculars or vocabulary choices. We choose different words to describe things. Mm -hmm. And that's not wrong. It's just we're different. So if you hear a word that's not familiar to you, um, grab a dictionary. Don't be afraid of that. And look up the word. Anytime that you apply yourself and you, you extend yourself by faith to receive the word of God, he will always meet you. Always. Amen. But if you go, well, I'm going to just give up and quit, then you won't be able to move forward. But if you stretch, if you reach, if you apply yourself, if you try... And not just, I'll try it, and if it fails, oh well. But, I mean, apply yourself. Go the extra mile. You will benefit from this, and you will be blessed. Um, you know, there are things that we're talking about that, in, in my personal walk with the Lord, took me years to receive. Like Amen. fasting, praying, 
years for God to pour these things into me. And we're talking about them in a much more succinct fashion Amen. <laughs> of what took, uh, you know, I would say the greater part of a decade for me to hear from God and see all put together just because there were things that I never knew and I wasn't familiar with and I had no um, point of reference for, if you will, um, except for the word of God and watching God unfolded and in the midst of life and trying to, to master other things here, he's pouring in his word, but we're doing it in a close, um, close segment where you can go from start to finish. If you will, you can catch up with, you know, years worth of information or revelation that the Lord is providing within these episodes, but you have to be willing and ready to receive it. And you have to be hungry for the word of God, not Kamisha's opinion, because that's not worth anything, but the word of God is worth everything. Diligent and dedicated, right? We're, we are in this training up God's warriors, exactly. his end time army. Nobody gets to become a warrior mm-hmm. going through the training haphazardly. Mm-hmm. There, there's got to be commitment, diligence, mm-hmm. and dedication put in. And there is a challenge. Amen. People are challenged all the time. Exactly. And what might be easy for uh, one person in one area might be difficult in another, and then vice versa. Amen. But it's about remaining committed, diligent, sticking with it through the easy times, but the tough times as well. Mm-hmm. Amen. Not giving up, but continuing to press on Amen. in the Lord. Amen. And I just want to share a quick testimony with you. I, I knew a a man who grew up in a um, Islamic background and was illiterate until adulthood. And he became familiar with the Lord. He received Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And literally, the Holy Spirit taught him to read from nothing. He studied the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit taught him to read from there, and he could read nothing. Had barely been to school in his life, not enough to actually garner any education, and Um, was literally, as an adult, unable to read. But God taught him from Mm -hmm. his word how to read. And that person is in love with Jesus today and has been able to progress through all levels of high school, even through a master's degree, last I heard. So Mm -hmm. not that the degree is here, either here nor there, but the what God can do is here. (laughs) What God can do should be exalted. And if there's a willing vessel, it doesn't matter who they are, what their history is, or their past has been, God is able to make a difference in their life and change them from being not able to read to being able to read and a master of education. Mm-hmm. So, all right, let's get into the word here. Um, can you give us our opening scripture, honey, in Isaiah 46, uh, verses 9 through 10? Absolutely. It says, Remember the former things long past, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is no one like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things which have not been done, saying, My purpose will be established. And I will accomplish all my good pleasure. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then can you read? Well, let's go to the end. Okay. That's what it tells us. Amen. And then what it tells us, well, two things. First, it says to recall the things from the past. Well, we have just spent time in this God's Warrior series talking about our our heritage, but our mission and our heritage. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So why? So we can draw strength from that. And the Lord demonstrating these are our time proven examples Mm -hmm. of the lord moving in and on our behalf showing himself strong for people that will press on in him that will in faith move forward trusting Mm -hmm. him demonstrating their love their faith and their hope in him amen so then he tells us i declare the end from the beginning so let's go to the end first Amen. And look at what he says. Amen. And while you're turning there, I just want to share this thought with you. Um, Position yourself. We are examining the word from being seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, not from being on the earth or under the earth. We're looking Mm -hmm. at it from his perspective. So we have to... um, Keep that in mind so we can see things the way that he does. And just in the natural, if you're in an airplane, the earth looks totally different than it does when you're actually standing on the ground or in the street. It's a totally different experience and viewpoint. And God is looking from his perspective, seated, not just literally in heaven, but as the authority over all things. So Amen. that's how he speaks and operates. <laughs> Alrighty, Henny, can you read that for us? Let's go to Revelation 19, 10. 
Okay. It says, Then I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, Do not do that. Some versions may say, See that you don't do that. Mm-hmm. When it says, I am a fellow servant of yours and your brethren who hold the testimony of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Worship mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, so that's an important component there that we see that very Mm -hmm. last phrase. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So we know the basic prophecy is encouragement, um, comfort, and edification. But the prophetic in the way of forth telling, future um, telling of future Mm -hmm. events before they happen, um, that in particular references Jesus, but it also includes the encouragement, the comfort, and the edification. So remember, the title of this episode is Prophetic Declarations About Jesus's Mission. So when God speaks, um, he speaks in, uh, there's a couple of different ways that the Lord can talk, but when he speaks in the way that is designed to change the current circumstances with his words, he says what he wants the outcome to be. Example, In the beginning, uh, when the earth was without form and void, God didn't say, man, it's dark. I don't know what I'm going to do. Woo-wee. Jesus, did you see how dark that is? Holy Spirit, man, I can't believe it. No, he said, light be. He said what he desired to happen. He said what the end result of the the circumstance and the situation was going to be. He doesn't, he's not relegated to looking at the natural circumstance Mm -hmm. when he is addressing something in the way of um, changing the circumstance and how he has come to create, he speaks the end result, the desired outcome. Um, Another example of that would be in Mark 11, 14, when Jesus came to that fig tree that had leaves, but no fruit. He said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. He didn't say, why don't you have fruit on you? You lion tree, what you doing over here? He didn't waste his time with anything else. He declared, he spoke exactly what the end outcome for that tree was going to be. And then, you know, when you go back and read the rest of that um, segment, that the tree was dried up from the roots when they came back around and the disciples remembered that Jesus had spoken concerning it. So Isaiah 46 tells us a principle about God. He tells us what the outcome is going to be. And then after he plans and determines what the outcome is going to be, he drives towards it. He arranges everything in sequence and alignment to get to that point, that desired outcome that he has declared, that he's spoken, that he wants. He's always driving towards his end result, his goal and his outcome. So we're going to look at, um, we're going to look at Genesis chapter two, verse 24 to get into that. Um, Again, God declares at the beginning of a situation, he declares the end result and that's what he speaks. And this is um, a reference to that Isaiah 46, 10. And then it's not only the beginning of all time, but it's also the beginning of the situation. And you'll see both of those um, work at the same time in God, because remember with his manifold wisdom, he can speak to past, present, and future. He can speak individual and spiritual all in the same breath, it seems like almost Mm -hmm. sometimes. And he can go from one place to the other because he is not limited as a human being. So when we walk with him, we have to take our seat in heavenly places and begin to act like our God acts and not a replacement, not the, not the Lucifer thing, trying to knock God out and be an, a counterfeit for God. But he said, imitate him as a dear child, I, imitate God as dear children. So that means if this is how your father operates, this is how his mind works. This is how he thinks. Then you pattern yourself after him, letting the Holy spirit bring that to the surface in your life so that you can converse with him, that you can talk with him. You can understand him. And when you read his scriptures, you see the heart of God. You see what he truly desires and how it all works together and then how you can cooperate with it, which is absolute victory and liberty for you. But then you can turn around and give that liberty to someone else because that's a part of our ministry is reconciliation and setting at liberty the captives and whatever echelon that's on. So my love, you have um, Genesis 2 verse 24. Absolutely. 
It says, For this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Okay. So I know you guys have probably heard this is all ooey gooey. This is about marriage and love. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so much more. Amen. This is really, this is a prophetic word that's being spoken here. This is specifically talking about Jesus because Amen. remember, man is not the epitome of what God's focus is. Man is not the center of God's focus. Restoring his heavenly community is. And that's what Jesus does for us. That's his role as he's come through the earth is to restore us to him through his blood. Correct? Right. So let's look at this a little bit more in depth. Uh, and let's let's read it again. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Now, God had just brought woman and all her beauty and prepared glory that God gave her to her husband, and Adam was in impressed. Absolutely. <laughs> he was ecstatic. You know, that's why he said in verse 23, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. But God is speaking through him prophetically because that's how God operates. Amen. Now, we know that Adam had not sinned at this point, And so he's in the full on presence and glory of God. And he is he already named the animals. Did he just know those names? No, Holy Spirit inspired them. <laughs> Holy Spirit um, inspired him to do that and gave him revelation of what to do. That's the Holy Spirit bringing that forth through him. So it stands to reason that he would have the other operations of the Holy Spirit that weren't um, necessarily addressed at overcoming sin at this point, but he would have the fullness of the working of the Spirit in him because he was walking in the Spirit. He was not darkened by sin. Now, let's look at that verse closely. Don't brush over it and don't apply a traditional religious aspect or perspective to it because you'll miss what God is doing there. Um, First of all, when we look at this, man shall leave his father and mother to be joined to his wife. Did Adam have a mother? No, not for one second. No, he sure did. Well, not by well, natural, what we would he consider He did not a have a natural birth mother. No one gave birth to him. He was created a full grown man by the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in the image and likeness of God. So there was no mother that gave birth to him for him to even speak of. And you could say, well, he's talking about the role that women will eventually play. And, and there is an application, but that's not the truth of it. That's not the real part of it, because we read in Revelation 19, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. All prophecy is pointing us to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and Jesus Christ also as the lamb slain before the foundation of the of the earth. It was the blood of Jesus and his obedience even to that point that caused him to be exalted and given the name above every name, right? That at every, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord, but it's his blood. That's the pathway for us, right? And our faith in the name of Jesus that, that reconciles us to God. So which is more important for God to be talking about you and you, you and me getting married? <laughs> you know what I mean? and, No, when you understand his, his mission and what the Lord is doing, which is, amen purifying the heavenly community because that's the focus we're not the focus we have the opportunity to come into alignment amen. with his focus amen so so there's there's more right because let's explain a few things just to mm -hmm. well for ourselves but also for, amen. for everyone that is being trained up as god's warrior here right amen. what happens there where it, right here right he says this is now bono oh, so uh, we'll start in verse 22, right? The Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man, brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out from man. Mm -hmm. Now, then it says, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Right? Mm -hmm. Let's understand the gravity of this prophetic word. Amen. So, we've gone over this in the past, right? Galatians 4.26, mm -hmm. which when you just get right down to the core of it, says, but the Jerusalem above is free, 
she is our mother, right? And we talked about the purification, right? The mm -hmm. type and shadow mm -hmm. of uh, the purification of the heavenly community. The uh, woman's menstruation mm -hmm. cycle is a type and shadow of what is happening. Amen. Right? So it would also help us understand what Job says when he says, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there. Right? Is that, I hope that helps everybody. He's talking about he came, uh, just like Adam, right? From the heavenly community, so from eternity. Now he's in time, and he will be going back or returning to the heavenly community. Mm -hmm. Right? So we get to be a part of this plan Amen. and the Lord's mission. Amen. By being joined to him, being his body being his bride, but in a dwelling place of the Lord Most High. Isn't that what, what he talks about constantly? In well, I'll say John, the Gospel of John 14 and 15, and even 16, but especially 14 and 15. He's talking about, hey, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then my Father and I will make our abode in you. Amen. So, Looking back at this scripture, Jesus is the last Adam, right? And so let's look at the journey that Jesus took. He left his father, God the Father, mm -hmm. right? He put on, and he left heaven and his, his abode there. He put on flesh and came and was born into the earth. And his coming in the earth allowed for Christ to redeem his church to be reconnected with his bride, his wife, right? We, we talk about that often, the bride of Christ. And they shall become one flesh. And then um, we are forever joined together in, in eternity together. So we just read in Galatians um, 4.26 that women, the womb or woman represent home. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and, you know, most people don't need a a detailed map to make that connection. Women are a representation of home. And then it specifically states that making that correlation. So as um, the apostle Paul talks through Ephesians, he's talking about this wonderful mystery. And because we have been so focused on mankind being the object of everything in the center of everything, we miss this mystery that God is trying to articulate to us and tell us about so we can grab a hold of it and join in and be a part of it. Instead of trying to make God form around us, we should be forming around him. So, so also, can I, can I share this part, right? Because sure. it's talking about that we're taken from, out from man, right? Mm -hmm. So again, it's talking about the heavenly community, but it's also saying, if we go to the gospel of John, the very first, I'll say the first four, five verses, right? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So it's also there saying that woman was taken out of, right? Was going back to Genesis 2, right? It was fashioned a rib taken out of man. So it came, we all came from the Lord mm -hmm. initially, right? So it's important for us to understand those connecting connecting points so we can then further understand the prophetic word given and the mission of the Lord from the beginning. Amen. And if you understand that God is dealing with sin and he said, there's two kingdoms, you make a choice. And he's already told Satan, your days are numbered. I'm, you're already going to be banished to the lake of fire. He's already given Satan his sentence. And this um, Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 24, is like Babe Ruth calling a shot. Amen. <laughs> Coming to the mound, pointing <laughs> at pointing the it. outfield, going, I'm, I'm about to score a home run on you. <laughs> so, and this is where it's going. <laughs> exactly. I'm about to put it right over this fence, and you're going to watch me run around these bases and look you in your eyeball and win this game. And everyone's so, going to cheer. Exactly. So God is dealing with sin and the adversary 
through this as well. So this prophetic word coming here is God calling a shot. Amen. And then think about this as well. If God is all knowing, right? And there's and no, is. and he is. He's and omniscient, there's, omnipotent, omnipresent, and sovereign. Amen. Then it's because if God is all knowing, would he be surprised by Satan being in the garden? Not for one second. And the serpent. Okay. Especially where he kicked them out. There. Exactly. So it's no coincidence that God came and set everything up, right? We, we already learned that there was more than one tree in the center of the garden. He set everything up and he who knows everything and who's called, called his shot, he's declared the outcome from the very beginning and um, has lined everything out, went away from the garden at this key moment, this clutch moment in time. Adam <laughs> just gives a prophetic word talking about what's coming in the future. And then he leaves, right? And I say he left because he came back and said, Adam, where are you? Right? right? He wasn't there at that moment. He wasn't standing there. When we go to chapter three and the serpent's talking to the woman, God's not standing right there next to them, right? God wasn't surprised by Lucifer or the Satan or the serpent in, in the garden, deceiving woman, and he wasn't surprised by Adam's fall. That's why Jesus is called the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Think about that. Don't just recite it and rehearse it like, oh, yeah, yeah, and dismiss it. How can he be considered slain, dead, killed, mm -hmm. bloodshed, before the world was ever formed, before he ever said, light be, Jesus was already in his mind, in the flesh, on the cross, had already completed the job. And, been die and died for us. His blood was on the mercy seat and Christ was raised mm -hmm. again, seated at his right hand before these things even happened. Exactly. So think about that. Ponder that. Let that minister to your spirit. So he's going, here's what I'm about to do to you, devil. I'm going to send my son. This is already taken care of. I'm going to prophesy it through my, my man, Adam, here. I know he's about to fall in a few minutes or a couple verses, <laughs> <laughs> however long that took. <laughs> and, and then right after that, he demonstrates it. Exactly. And then um, then God comes back and goes, okay, now here's what happened. Here's what you let in, natural Adam, right? Here's what you let in, but I've got a plan that Jesus has already been, this has already worked out. Got a plan right? that's already been in place and, and is moving forward even as we speak. Exactly. Exactly. So I think that's a good place to kind of um, taper off this episode so you can have a chance to meditate on the word of God. Listen to this over and over again. Listen to the word. Listen to what Holy Spirit is saying to you and the things that are plainly disclosed in the word of God when we put the word in its right order. When we put God, his will, and his plan in its rightful place and then we become subject to that, look how clear the word becomes. Look how easy it is to understand and go, oh, of course. God, you're working this out. Of course, you're taking it. You're calling your shot and you're taking it to the house. You're redeeming all of creation, not just mankind. You're getting your planet back. Mm -hmm. You're getting your heaven back, clean and which, purified. Which is you're, why the scripture says the earth is the Lord's and everything therein or in it, depending on your translation. Amen. And God did not come up with the plan. Oh, oh, man, Adam just said, Jesus, you think, you know, he, he wasn't do? in the scramble trying to oh, figure right. out what's going to happen next. He had already pre-planned it. He had already ordained it because he knew what was going to happen. So this is all working out according to God's plan, but he's driving towards this one thing. Amen. Right? So let that marinate in your spirit, <laughs> meditate on the word of God. We are praying for you. We love you. And we appreciate being a part of your walk with Jesus Christ. Um, we just want to bless you and thank you for joining us and encourage you to remember to live your life in the Messiah's love. God bless you. Want to know more about a day of prayer? Sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry, inspiring messages, and coupon codes for the merch shop. Visit our website, adayofprayer.org. Click on connect in the menu bar and complete the form. Be sure to check the box that says subscribe.